Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. G'day guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg and today we are going to do one of these big moves again. And uh, if you follow the channel you will remember we did one big move previously and uh, that was at the other end of the theatre where I'm at at the moment. And that worked out really well and we ended up really making the most use of that space and I'm really happy with that. We did all that movement and reset up the, the drums which half killed me but um, so happy with that setup now. Um, so that end of the room is has been fine now. Of course I've been getting a few extra games lately as you may know and room in here is starting to run out again <laughs> and with the space invaders that we got a couple of episodes ago that's still sitting outside we need to sort that out get that machine in here but to do that i you know i really don't want to just squeeze in and try and make do with that i really need to sort of rethink and i have rethought how the rest of the theater can be organized to fit more games in because that's what's more important right <laughs> we need to get some more space for more games um, but I don't want to compromise losing this, you know, the, um, the big projector setup has been awesome for watching movies, it's, it's really a theatre, but I'm going to have to make some compromises guys because this whole area where I sit and, you know, watch this big fantastic screen behind me uh, is all well and good, um, but it's taking up, you know, it's taking up half of this whole whole room area that I have for this arcade <clears throat> and all I've got here really is the one cocktail and we've squeezed in the championship sprint behind and that really not a great place for that it was covering off the Atari shelf I was never really happy with the way that sat anyway so so yeah I, I think I mentioned before guys I like to sit and really think just through all the different options and you know before I make a big change otherwise I'll just end up changing things all over the place uh, on a continual basis we don't really want that and uh, and so I have thought about this move now for, for quite some time and, and I've, I've, I've got to a, a solution and as I said a small compromise um, we effectively gonna we have to use this space behind here where the main um, the main projectors landing on that there could fit four arcades right across so <laughs> so we need that space which means that we will have to reproject this um, on one of the other walls and we'll have to move the furniture around to suit so I think what I'll do is I'll get the camera off the tripod guys so let me walk you through and, and show you what we're going to do in here and then we're going to get started so let's have a look this little machine here will probably stay there I do have some uh, other potential ideas for that but this is where things start changing Right, we don't want the championship sprint here or the Atari shell behind. So what I'm thinking, guys, is that you know, if you, again, if you've watched some of the early episodes, you would have seen that I I can sort of change the layout in here, which was sort of a half way of trying to improve the situation when people come over and play games, and that is to move this couch, you know, flip it round sideways against this wall, and then the other side of the couch just stays there over the other side of the wall and the cocktail table comes into the middle and stuff. And that look, you know, that provides um, some space when you're walking through and you can potentially play the, uh, the cocktail in the middle and you're sort of looking sideways up at the main screen, which, you know, when it's just running stuff like the Apple TV uh, imagery, it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not ideal and clearly I'm not getting the maximum bang for the buck in terms of space in here for arcade games. So what are we going to do? Well, what we can do is, first of all, we're going to lose that that uh, chase at the end there, that last seat with the chase that's going. That'll give me some space straight away to work with. And this will probably get replaced, the last two seats here with the uh, gear sticker, which I, uh, I stuck in there for 
playing driving games but um yeah i mean this is a little bit old anyway and i'd probably be better with a more just a compact nice comfortable three seater of about the same size but anyway for the moment we will make do with the two seater component of this we'll spin it around and we'll flick it against this this wall but we're going to move it back so it's going to pretty much start where this cocktail machine starts and that's because all of that stuff behind is going to be taken out of there and all that stereo stuff will be taken and put against the wall at the back here running across here okay so you can sort of see where this is going right so the the championship sprint will then be able to come over and against the back wall and i'll literally be able to get four machines across that back wall still have space to stand next to them before the couch starts and then the couch will come all the way out and actually come past here and into sort of this part of the room but that's fine because you swing around and behind the back there will be where the new screen is and the intention guys is that yeah i'm going to have to move the projector which is currently up there and i'll temporarily move it to this wall okay so this will go up here and then that will shine across to the new location across here now that's going to be temporary and you can see i've got a light switch in the middle of the room there so that's not going to help so i actually have to pick up a a, a piece of of um, board and put that in front for the moment uh, and at some stage what i really want to do guys is actually get rid of the projector and end up getting a 4k really large like a 70 i think 78 is the biggest or maybe just the 75 i think 78 gets really expensive real quick 75 i think you can get reasonably and the 75 will fit nicely over there and then of course i don't have problems with walking in front of the screen all the time you know i mean this project is great but when you are walking around in here um, you're prone to shadows okay when you're walking around and of course you know i mean it's it's it's, it's not going to be really light in here but when when there is some light like it is now you know you lose picture quality so it's going to be much better guys to have you know a, a, a dedicated huge 75 inch screen and i've measured it out and the 75 inch screen you know fits nicely between this bottom you know stereo um table unit and the speakers will be able to go up on on the side uh next to the tv and it's probably going to be about three quarters of the size that i have now i mean it's still pretty big um and i think that's going to look pretty pretty damn cool over here in the corner now the only other thing is is that yes i'm going to have to move this pinball <laughs> table again it's been that's the third time it's going to be the fourth time we're going to have to move that the atari shelf i'm hoping to be able to bring over in this direction over here and maybe i can squeeze these up into the corner not sure that might impact the ability to put four machines along there I might only be able to get three um, but we'll see and in the front of the couch uh, which will be in the middle of the floor here now in between uh, where the new TV, where the TV area is going to be we'll put the Hankin cocktail so you can easily play that um, in front of the couch and you can swing a stool around the other side so that's the plan guys and this time yeah it's going to be just it's take a little bit of time i'm going to take all that stuff off the shelf before i move it i think i don't think i can drag it along we'll see a few things to take off the walls um obviously the pinball table the speakers are held up with some brackets i'll probably reuse those to mount the projector temporarily until the tv comes on another day have to save up for that so that'll be a little while and the biggest job is going to be all the stereo stuff and all the cabling and redoing all that um and setting that back up over here so i'm going to set the uh camera up on the tripod and we will zoom through this at at least 20 times speed probably if not more <laughs> you'll see the work that goes in to rearranging the other half of the theater all right guys enough talking let's get into it
and guys we are done but there's something wrong isn't there you pick it this wall behind us here should have the projector screen projecting on it and it doesn't it's got space invaders back here and the atari shelf and the tato hyper olympic so what happened well i um i had it all set up with the master plan in mind and i don't know guys when i looked at it i just thought it just doesn't look right you know you, you walk into the theater and at the end of the room you know the spaces and that i mean the, those games actually lined up really well at the end of the room but just coming in and not seeing the big projector screen like you normally do when you come in here which always makes it a little bit more magical i think um not having that and you know those machines being up against the cream wall really standing out i think like if it was all repainted to sort of suit the machines being there it would be a lot different so yeah i wasn't feeling it guys and i um i must admit i left it for like a couple of days just to see if i was going to warm to it i even i had painted um a massive piece of sort of gyp rock stick up on the wall ready for the projector to project on it you know in front of that light uh light switch had that all prepared and and look to be honest like some of that stuff actually looked pretty cool like having the speakers set up there and that screen set up and i could imagine having like a you know 75 inch 4k tv there instead as a replacement that would be awesome uh but yeah just the layout and just the whole vibe of the room sort of really really changed so yeah guys i don't know if you've uh had that sort of situation before where you've really thought about moving around stuff in a specific way to get a specific outcome and when you do it it sort of like doesn't quite work out as planned and i really thought about this move you know i, was, I thought about it for a long time but yeah it just didn't sit right with me so it was funny actually i think after the couple of days where i sort of was trying to see if it would work or not i came in here and it was i don't know about 11 o'clock at night and i was you know i was feeling pretty tired and i looked at it i was like nah it's got to it's got to go back how it was but it still needs to accommodate the the machines and the extra space and so right there and then i just went on a mission and put everything effectively back to where it was although about i don't know a foot over and i'll show you that in a minute um but yeah, I've ended up with something that I think actually it, work, it works. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. And I, you know, I'm not totally over that whole idea of having that screen there behind me on this wall. But I think for now, I've actually managed to get all the machines in and still maintain the, the, the setup that I sort of had before. Slightly compromised, but I'll show you that now. So let's take a look. So first of all, we start in the Space Invaders corner and uh, you can see the spaces which was the main machine we were trying to get in here is finally in which is awesome and here we have the atari shelf now really this is taking up room for another cabinet let's face it guys <laughs> so <laughs> i think i need to lose the shelf at some point and maybe utilize the space across the top here for all the atari stuff i think that's definitely the shelf is the uh, the days are numbered for it uh, but at least I've got spare capacity for another machine, which is awesome. Next to it, of course, we have the Atato Hyper Olympic, which is really a original Defender cabinet. And uh, it's looking pretty nice with this light reflecting off the side. And I'll tell you what, guys, I really, really like this cabinet. I really do. I'd like to, and I know there's like some different colors of it, and there's um, even a special version that has lots of really cool graphics on the side. I'd really love to get one or two more of those and have them lined up here in a row that would be crazy and we have next to it our uh, championship sprint and of course if you've been watching the other videos you'll know that it is down and not working because i took the cpu board out to get the super sprint in operation and then yeah look <laughs> we have all the stereo stuff back where it was but as you can see it's right up hard against the wall whereas before it was dead center in this wall here 
And what that meant was I had to move the projector over and the projector is not really in the right place. The screen is a little bit off and uh, I really need to reposition the projector. But quite frankly, um, and again, the projector looks terrible with the lights on. I've got full white light on behind me here, but it does look really nice with the lights out. Um, but I think certainly I want to get a 75 inch screen 4K display in here some stage. And because I can only go this small, <laughs> I can only get it down to this level because where the projector is, it meant that I had to put the speakers uh, down flat here. And I've had this like this before, guys, and it actually really stuffs up the sound. Um, it makes an amazing difference that, you know, when these things are vertical, the tweeters are much clearer and when they're lying down like this it sort of sounds a bit muddy so i certainly don't want to keep it that way um, but to solve that situation really i have to turn the projector off and get a 75 inch tv in between which will fit beautifully there so that's definitely the plan we have the missile command cocktail here and yeah i'm not sure if that's going to stay here or not um, it's really a bit in the way to be honest and uh, we might look at what we're going to do with that. And then tucked away on the side here, I've got a little space to sort of stick my uh, steering wheel and, uh, and the flight gear, flight simulation stuff, and you know, we'd tuck it away behind here. But in actual fact, if this was sort of set up properly, I could, guys, I could, you know, think about the Atari shelf being out of there. It's quite wide, that Atari shelf. Take that out of there take that other space I have measured it up I reckon I can get five arcade machines across here so and now that I've got super sprint of course championship sprint may not stay in this room I still do want to keep it at this stage but it may not actually stay in here in which case I could I could get three extra machines in here at some stage so plenty of room for growth which is cool but you know what guys I've got a concentrate on getting everything working in here the couch will be changed at some point and i have the opportunity still to oh gosh look at that lcd guys i've got to get in a crt in there it's really drive me crazy so we've got to get this uh this couch out at some point and get it swapped over and this can still swing around like I used to have it up against the wall, you know, flat against the wall to really open up the space here in front of the machines. And I would show you the rest of the arcade, but I can't because it's a mess. It's a mess of projects and things that need fixing and sorting out. So yeah, I can't uh, show you the rest of the arcade right at the moment. But that's where it is, guys. That's what I've ended up with. Wow, it was a huge job to move it around. And even though it looks like I've really ended up with what I had, clearly I've got enough space now to have all these machines lined up down this entire wall here. So much better use of space. And so there you have it, guys. A little quick video this one. It's time to show you the update of the room. You know, these videos don't last long, but the amount of time it has taken to do this room is unbelievable. I think one of the good things about moving around stuff like this, and you might be in the same boat if you're in a situation where you've got just tons and tons of gaming equipment or electrical equipment all configured, and you haven't moved it for a long time, I, I always find that I end up with just masses of cables left over if I do a move, like I move everything out and there's just tons of stuff that over time I've you know plugged in, I've unplugged stuff and usually just sort of left the cables and and you just end up with this massive wires and of course it's always you know it's pretty filthy usually around the back because you haven't been around the back of there so long because of all the cables and crap so it's actually a good idea guys just to you know even just reorganize this i've just moved this a foot along but i sort of had to do that to just move it i couldn't have just shifted it anyway um and at the end of the day it's pretty cool to be able to clean everything up you know rationalize all the cables and make sure everything is safe of course as well so from that point of view, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not unhappy with having to have moved all that stuff twice. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think the, the outcome is the, is the right one. I'm feeling a lot, a lot happier about that. So, uh, look, before we wrap up, there was something I was thinking about and I wanted to share with you, just this little story. Um, I wonder how many of you have been in a situation where 
um, you have almost been killed <laughs> because of your hobby, because of your passion, because of your love of video games. Uh, so if you have, have a story like this, I don't know, hopefully there's not many stories where people have been almost killed trying to play video games, but if you do have a story, please share it with me. Uh, I'll share you mine. So I was, um, I was about 10 or 10 or 11, I think, uh, and I was, I remember biking to a hamburger bar, and this hamburger bar was awesome because it had um, it had an outrun there, and oh God, and I remember seeing that outrun for the first time, just thinking, oh my God, look at the graphics, it's just, it's just awesome. Um, I was just blown away with the graphics, and I remember playing that quite a bit, not as much as I wanted to, because I'm pretty sure it was a 50 cent game at the time, and of course I was, I was playing these games in New Zealand and everything was 20 cents, and so anyway, I, re I definitely remember that. I remember a Space Invaders Part 4 was written on it. And, and, I, and I must admit, later on, I was looking in Maine trying to find where is the Space Invaders Part 4? Um, and it ended up being a, it was a bootleg, and I found the actual bootleg. And what was cool about it, there's been a couple of uh, variations of Space Invaders that actually do this, but it had the, the mothership that went across the top, and then it, the mothership would actually drop rockets down at you. Um, and then they would come down and like split out, like kamikaze if you played that sort of game, they'd come down and split out so you had to get right out of the way. And, uh, and I really loved that version, it was like super hard, super cool, and I only ever saw that, that version there, and of course it was probably a fairly rare bootleg actually at the time. Um, and the other one was Cosmic Alien, and funny thing about Cosmic Alien, because um, I really, really loved Galaxian, and I was coming off the back of that because all these other really cool games were coming out, but I still really had a cool passion for Galaxian. And I remember looking at Cosmic Alien going, oh, I wish, I wish this was, it was Galaxian. Um, but I thought, oh, well, it looks sort of similar, I'll, I'll give it a go. So, I, I, and I ended up learning to love it. I learned, ended up learning to love that game, just by the sound effects as the, as the aliens swoop down and the way they swoop down really fast, much better than Galaxian, in my, my opinion, uh, in terms of challenge. And yeah, and it had a little boss guy, like in the last guy that you've got to shoot that's, that comes out. And it, it, I don't know, I, I thought it was really cool. And I remember those three games in particular. You know, there was definitely other machines there but those three games I can I can remember anyway so the story how did I I was, I was almost killed right <laughs> so how did that happen well I remember going down to this burger bar and I always take my bike everywhere so I was cruising down on my bike and guys and and before I get to this the killing story the close killing story I had 20 bucks on me I remember seeing twenty dollars twenty dollars think about that twenty dollars twenty cent pieces it's five games a dollar. That's 100 games. Now you think how long you can play just on one 20 cent piece. I was down there for hours, guys, and I can't remember how I actually got that. I got it legally, that <laughs> 20 bucks. I did get it from my mum, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, But there was a lot of money back then, you know. Um, and look I, don't, look, I don't think I spent the whole 20 bucks on the games. Uh, I probably bought some food and burgers or whatever at the same time, although they were pretty cheap as well. So anyway, I had the 20 bucks, I was on the bike, and I was cruising down, and I was, you know, wanting to get there eager, fast. And I was on a main road, and, you know, really quite a busy road. And, uh, and for those of you in Christchurch would know uh, Papua Nui, the Papua Nui area and Papua Nui Road, and there's another road that comes off there, which heads off to Bishopdale, for those guys that know that way. <laughs> I've forgotten the name of it. Uh, but anyway, there's a fairly decent, you know, decent busy road. And I'm cycling down super fast, and next minute, this person opens their car door, and bang, smack into the door, head over heels, onto the road, like just straight onto the road, like right in the middle of the pathway of traffic. And fortunately, you know, at that point in t exact point in time, there wasn't any traffic coming past on the road. If there had have been, game over. <laughs> Absolutely would have been game over because I was just landed sprawled in that split second onto the road. And, you know, isn't it amazing, you know, that, that you know, situations like that can just happen in an instant. Um, 
you just never know. You got to <laughs> you got to be careful, guys. You really do have to look out. And ever since that day, I tell you, ever since that day, I've always looked when I've been on a bike. I've always been really careful as I've approached cars and to see if anyone's in them and just keep a wide berth around them and stuff. So it has affected me. <laughs> so anyway, that's my story of almost being killed playing video games. If you've got one, as I said, please share it with me. I'd love to hear it. Uh, but yeah, if that had turned out a different way, I would not be here today to share these stories with you so thank goodness it all turned out sweet in the end so anyway guys um not much sort of gaming going on for this episode nothing particularly new um but i thought i'd share with you the move because i tell you what there is a lot of stuff coming up there's a lot of stuff coming up if you haven't subscribed to the channel so far please do subscribe because we've got a lot of cool things coming up especially if you got if anyone one of you guys want to get a like an old tv and convert it into an arcade monitor well that's one of the things that is coming up and there's a ton of other stuff because guys i have got heaps of projects on at the moment <laughs> i'm getting project fatigue it's really starting to concern me uh, there's lots of things going on so yeah please do subscribe and again thank you guys those guys that have subscribed thanks for doing that remember it's not about the money of course it's not <laughs> it's like i've earned like three or four bucks for i don't know how many hours worth of work over the last six or seven months not about the money i enjoy it but it's good when i get subscribers because i know people want to see this sort of content and they're enjoying it so which is great which makes me want to do more makes me want to fix more and do stuff in the arcade and for that i actually thank you i thank you for subscribing because you keep me going and you're keeping me um, active in the hobby which is cool and uh, and I still don't think of this as work it's, it's still awesome fun and I hope you uh, get some enjoyment from watching these videos so really do look after yourself and as I say I mean I, you know I say these things at the end of each video but I, I really do hope that um, you do have time to a fix your games if you've got games that are broken because I know what it's like especially right now where you've got just lots of broken games and it can seem like it's just overpowering you know um, to to get stuck in and fix them but fix them up guys and and play them and share them with your you know friends and family and stuff and you know share that retro goodness with other people because um, you know this is an this is just an awesome part of history to to share and i think you know the more people that can experience it the the, the better so share play have fun and uh, of course until next time ciao for now you must continue you can do it you are amazing the theater is now closed